Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Fling. I am CJ Maurer here, and I'm super excited to be joined by my guest today, Heather Carocchio. I've actually known Heather for probably going on five or six years now. Um, Heather is in the family of Complete Payroll, my former employer. Um, so I've worked with her brothers and even her husband who's at that company. It's a really cool, uh, tight-knit family company. But Heather actually is an entrepreneur in her own right. She runs a local daycare in her home of Geneseo, New York. And recently, has started what I think is a very impressive and innovative health and wellness business called Wellness Matters. They do um, nutritional consulting, group programs, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm excited to unpack. She's got a blog, she's got a podcast, she's starting to build some online courseware and really focus on uh, functional medicine uh, in ways to help people really get to the root issues uh, and opportunities to optimize their health and really just become the best versions of themselves. And, and I think as somebody personally who sometimes is guilty of working too much and letting my health fall by the wayside, I think that's something that a lot of us can really uh, identify with. And so I'm super excited to unpack all of this with Heather. She's got a lot going on. It's really exciting and I'm excited to dive in. So first of all, Heather, welcome to The Fling and thank you. How are you? I am doing well. Um, I have to say it is definitely strange to be on this side of the aisle because I have been doing my own podcast now since I think like September is when I first started doing it. And every time I ask somebody to do a podcast with me, they're like, oh my gosh, can you send me the questions beforehand? And mm -hmm. you know, they get so nervous and I'm like, oh my gosh, just pretend it's you and I talking, no big deal. And then I found myself last night and parts of today being like, I got a podcast to do and you know, like, <laughs> what's going to happen and oh my gosh. So I can definitely see it from the other perspective now. So. Yeah, it's fun. I'm glad you said that because I've been on a couple of others and I've experienced the same thing. Obviously, we did not script this. Uh, we connected a couple of weeks ago and I said, hey, you got to come on. We got to talk about this. And we didn't plan it out really beyond that other than I want to talk about wellness matters, your journey and whatever comes up. But I've always framed it the same way. Like, you know, I think I told you that when I started this, I called it CJ's podcast and finger quotes because I didn't have a name for it. I just knew I wanted to do it and just kind of experiment in public. And so it wasn't until a couple of months in that I realized the theme and gave it the name and the branding and whatever. In the beginning, I was just the pandemic happened. And so I couldn't go meet my friends for lunch or or, or a coffee. Um, so we just chatted over Zoom and I just happened to record it and share it and see what happens. So um, I like that approach because I think at the end of the day, the more scripted the conversation is, the more it kind of, um, the the authenticity kind of evaporates from the conversation. Right. right. I, I definitely agree with that. But there are some people who like to be prepared. And I, in a couple of instances, I've either let somebody fire over a list of questions or I've just sent them a couple of ideas of things that I wanted just so they can mentally prepare. I can understand that too. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, yeah, I, with my podcast, see like yours is actually really neat in the fact that it sounds like you kind of let people come on and share their story of, you know, whatever it is that they're doing, but it can kind of be on different realms. And totally. Mine's kind of more pigeonholed in that I, have people on that can possibly um show somebody a different way to health and wellness like mm -hmm. different ways to look at health and wellness and introduce type you know that kind of thing see in marketing we wouldn't call that pigeonholed we'd call that no. specialized oh special right there's always got to be a nice little shine to it um yeah. and i would argue like if you go if you come like out of marketing school or whatever um, a specialized approach is usually advantageous. Okay. Um, it's, it's usually better to really, um, you know, build an audience or assert yourself as a thought leader in some space if that space is really well defined. So I think you have that going for you, to be honest. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, what I end up doing is like lately anyways, I've been getting a lot of different people on that can introduce different like therapies and stuff. 
So it's and I don't, yeah, I don't mean just like talk therapy. I mean, you know, um, I, you could do, um, acupuncture or massage therapy, or, I mean, there's so many different realms than just going and sitting on the couch with, you know, the professional, which is great. Cause I've, you know, I've tried that. I've tried tons of things. And I think, you know, a nice platter of ideas is mm -hmm. what, you know, is amazing to get out there for people to. Do you think there's a common theme that somebody who listens to all of your episodes might get out of it? That's consistent um, among all of your guests? I guess just my theme would be, and I always wrap up all of my um, podcasts or my blogs by saying, hopefully there was one thing in here that you could take home and start applying to your daily routine every day, you know, or even sprinkle it into your day. Yeah. But I just, I feel like there's so much out there. And a lot of times we get so um, in our own headspace and got our blinders on and just moving forward at that fast pace, whatever, that we aren't seeing all the external ways, totally. of, you know, you know what I mean? Just like checking out new ideas. Um, if somebody said five years ago, you know, what's your thought on Chinese medicine? I probably would have been like, I have no idea what you're talking about, you know? And now I just, I find it so fascinating. All these different ideas that have stemmed from thousands of years ago are still around to this day, i.e. yoga or meditation that really can get to the heart of somebody in their, you could be in the middle of a downward spiral. You could be where you think that you are at your highest vibration. It doesn't matter because there's always farther to go, you know? And I like that working on yourself is a journey you don't just like you're not at like a 10 and then you're done for the rest of your life mm -hmm. it's something that you need to be working forever you should be researching and reading and you know doing talking to people and hearing other people's stories and that just makes you evolve and open your eyes to so many things so yeah well there's a lot of people well I think you're a hundred percent right. I think there's a lot of people that really don't really care no. about their health, right? They no. they use it's kind of like a beater car, right? If it gets me from point A to point B, right. I'm okay, right? Yeah. But um, you know, I think there's a point where, and I guess I'm dating myself. I'm essentially I'm I'm in my mid thirties now, yeah. And um, I think when you're in your mid thirty, even though you know I feel, I don't. Thankfully, I have no underlying health issues, no chronic conditions, right. but I think you start to notice your mortality a little right. bit, whether it's, you know, uh, a couple drinks on a Friday night hit a little bit harder the next day, or maybe you tweak your knee or something and it, you feel like it takes a little bit harder to, or it takes a little bit longer to recover, or, right. you know, maybe that, that extra cup of coffee you know, affects your sleep pattern just a little yeah. bit. Like you start to notice your mortality and then you really start, at least for me, and I think this is true for a lot of people I know in this stage of life, you kind of start to pay attention to your body a little bit and right. the inputs and the outputs. Right. And um, there really is something tremendous about like feeling your best. Well, and that's my, one of my biggest issues is, so we should all technically be our own body whisperer, right? We should be able to um, hear internally different things that are happening. Um, but because we do not ever sit in silence anymore, we do not sit and just be without technology, without your phone, without you know somebody talking to you or whatever, we do not get to hear those internal um, messages that your body is giving you and so more and more things start breaking down. Um, for example, if we could just start realizing, like say, for example, you have, you're somebody that has like um, acid reflux or something. It doesn't sound like a major issue going on, but that is like a first message where your body's knocking on your door saying, hey, we're not kosher in here. Something else is going on. We are not in alignment. And I'm going to give you these subtle messages. And so you got acid reflux or you got, you know, some arthritis in your hand or your ankle hurts or whatever. You're getting kidney stones or, 
it could be a million different things. And so you're going to the doctor for the this and the that and the this and the that, trying to fix those symptoms. Band-aid the symptoms. Right. But really, if we could change that whole idea of that it's a symptom and think of it as a message that your body is trying to tell you something. And the only way to really get to that root cause of those symptoms is to go inward. Um, it sounds kind of deep, but if you start to look at it as your body is trying to communicate with you on a daily, minutely basis, and that you need to be centered with yourself, then it doesn't seem like so much work. Um, you can prevent a lot of things from happening just by getting centered with yourself. And ways to, you know, kind of get centered with yourself are like yoga, meditation, journal writing, going inward and remembering who you were because you did, you did when you were born, you knew exactly who you were. And then as society started telling you, nope, CJ, you're the outgoing one and you're the one that's got to, you know, put a smile on your face every day, you know, whatever. So you start to like think, okay, that's CJ. That's how I'm supposed to be for eternity when really, you know, there are so many different dimensions to you as a child. And then it kind of like gets knocked out of you. It's not socially acceptable or it's not, you know, kosher or whatever. And you go, you pick one direction, you kind of go that way, but you're like, you kind of lose sight of who you were as a kid. I don't know. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And I got to be honest, um, that really resonates with me. But candidly, there was probably a time at least a handful of years ago where I thought that was like a little hippy dippy. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I don't I don't think that anymore. And one one for one reason, what you said really makes a lot of sense. Um, the other reason is I think I've grown to realize kind of how little our culture or at least Western civilization prioritizes true health and wellness. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, we think about like like a Peloton bike. It's a $2,000 bike, right? Yep. It's really expensive. Um, yep. But if you use it all the time, it's an incredible tool right. to be healthy and become a better version of yourself. The Peloton bike is viewed as uh, dis a discretionary luxury. A luxury, exactly. But, but a $50,000 Ford F-150 is like the tool right. of the everyday working right. man, right? right. Where, and you know you've made it when you bought that car. Right. And it's like nothing against a Ford F-150. They're no. cool and people need trucks and and even if you don't, they're still cool. Whatever, all the power to you. But but why is why is something that's cost twenty five thousand or twenty five times as much seen it seen as like you know a, a standard tool of the rugged everyday working man? Whereas this bike, right, that's designed to optimize the one vehicle that you only right. have, your body, right, is seen as like a luxury, right, right? or something that's discretionary. That's how skewed our you know, definition of wellness really is in this country. Um, I met with some woman um, out in California that does um, Reiki and a whole lot of, you know, amazing things to help with health and wellness. And I had said to her, you know, I really want to like take this additional course or I want to buy these books or I want to do this. And I said, but I really probably shouldn't like spend the money right now. I was being practical. And she was like, Heather, don't look at your money when you're doing like your health and wellness stuff. Don't look at it as, you know, money. You look at it, at it as is this is an investment in you. And when you look at it as an investment of your well-being and your basically your soul, how can you really put a price tag on that? You know, and I it really resonated with me, you know, that it's funny what we prioritize and put our money into, you know what I mean? Like if I want to do further education on um, how I can be healthier and be more present in my life right now, I shouldn't really be, I mean, obviously if it's like a $10,000 course or something like that, then I would have to weigh the pros and the cons, you know, whatever, but nothing that I've been dabbling in costs like that kind of money, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like 
we have to start figuring out a way to prioritize where we are actually putting our money. And that's a whole nother like realm all in itself for wellness and whatnot, like you were just saying with the car yeah. and all that. You know, yeah, we don't I think think about it. I think as a society we're we're slowly becoming more aware of maybe some of our our um, gaps or at least deprioritization of health and wellness, like the push for um, whether it be parental leave or things like that, right? Just like the idea of like work-life balance. Um, and, you know, that's just a whole other ball of whack. But you just, you hear those things being talked about more. Um, you know, people encouraging you to like, you know, don't work yourself down to a, a grindstone or something like that. Yes, that's what, like, it's a huge push right now that instead of doing like being in the go 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 the do 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 having to make things work and happen we are now starting to realize wow i can um actually go out with my friends and have that cup of coffee and still be productive for two hours after that to get my work done whatever needs to get done and then i can go do like a short meditation and get back to my work again and continue to be productive so people are starting to realize actually by taking care of yourself for the day and, and implementing some self care in there, they're actually more productive than if they kept, you know, grinding and grinding and trying to get that the, the nine to five in and out. And a lot of people are realizing maybe I shouldn't take that home with me either. Like when I'm home, I'm going to be with my family. I'm going to prioritize the here and the now I did my job. I'm going to leave it at, at work and I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna be present with my family. If I wanna do additional stuff, I'll do some light reading at night or something. But that is actually a mindset that I can see through like social media and um, different things that I watch that is slowly being pushed in there that, you know, it's the yin and the yang, you know, the, the yin is go, 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 do, 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 which is where we've all been for so long. And now the yang is, Let's rest a little bit. Let's regroup and recharge. And then I can go back at it again. You right. Know? So right. It's, it's, it's the same thing with the parasympathetic nervous system where you can be in the fight or flight mode all the time, or you can be in the rest and digest and heal. And so if you're constantly, you know, in the go, 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 you're anxious all the time, you know, you can't catch your breath and all that. If we can start to bump it up so the scales are a little bit even, more even, and introducing, you know, some more self-care type things, you will see how much more productive, you're not even gonna have to try. It's just gonna naturally flow, you know, just, but That's it's amazing. a whole mind shift, you know? I so, need to connect you with Barbara Leggett. Uh, yeah. She is, She's a happiness coach. So her background, she ran the Explore and More Children's Museum in Buffalo for 25 years. She was the executive, it's a nonprofit and she was the executive director for like 20 or 25 years. And then um, she left a couple of years ago and started her own coaching practice where she coaches individuals and teams. Um, it's called um, the Happiness Institute of Western New York. It's in East Aurora. And I had her on my podcast and we kind of jumped into like an impromptu coaching session. So like right before we were talking, um, uh, like before we press record, like we got on, we were doing what we were doing. And um, I was like, why don't you just ask me these questions, you know, when, when we're recording? She's like, well, then that would kind of be like a quasi coaching session. And I go, is that okay? She goes, actually, I would love to do that. So we jumped into that and she was, she quickly identified one of my issues, which is essentially trying to run a marathon at a sprinter's pace and very calmly and strategically broke it down. And it was, it was really cool. It was really fun. I felt a little bit lighter afterwards. In fact, a lot lighter afterwards. And uh, a friend of mine who I didn't even know was listening to my podcast texted me and said when she was listening to what Barbara was saying, like it, it made her well up. Um, oh, so you, yeah. you two, um, I feel like would really get along and who knows, maybe there's like ways you guys could like collaborate on stuff. So I'm going to connect you guys after this. I would love that. Um, she's a great, she's a great person. 
Um, I'm and gonna, oh, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and I th I think it would be awesome. I think you guys would, are like two. People. I would absolutely love that. I just wanted to jump back to the hippy dippy thing. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> so, I never was, you know, quote unquote hippy dippy kind of way of being whatever and now i find that i can't get enough of it um it so when lockdown happened i my preschool had shut down for you know good for that school year and i was like i had been feeling which is this is like again you get these gentle whispers all the time but our ego overrides it and tells us you know nope you can't do that you can't do that but slowly i started to feel the last couple of years like i needed to do something else i love my preschool i love teaching um by the way not, i think i just remembered that i i might have mischaracterized it as a daycare i totally yeah. day preschool it's okay. I apologize. okay no worries um but so last few years, I've been like, you know, I've done this for a really long time. I used to teach kindergarten before that. And I kind of felt like I needed um, a little bit of a change or an addition. So what I did was I did add on. So I decided when lockdown happened, now's my perfect opportunity. And that's when I signed up for my class through um, the IIN Institute down in New York City. And it's basically a year long course on how to become a health coach. So you're talking about that one woman being a happiness coach. Um, happiness, in my opinion, encompasses all of wellness, right? So mind, body, spirit. And I really got to um, understand how each one depends on the well-being of the other so like a triangle when one's out of balance then you're not a triangle anymore right so i took the accelerated class for six months and it literally changed my life i have always been into health and wellness and i said if i wasn't teaching i would have gone down that path um but then i got to the point where i'm like why can't i do both so i you know i took that iin class and there's over 80 different um, speakers that come on, different doctors that come and they just, you know, they give their speech for whatever they're talking about that day. And I just got to hear and see so many people's lives that changed once they opened the door to their passions and once they opened the door to wellness. And I just felt like, I have to be a part of this. I can't not know this information and not share it with other people, which is then what led me to my website and podcasts and blogs and all that, um, where I just love to research. I want to know more every day. And as soon as I come up with, you know, I find a gem, it's like, I can't, talk about it enough with other people. Like my friends are like, holy cow, like seriously, <laughs> but I want to know all the things. And you know what, by talking about it with other people is when I come across somebody who's like, oh my gosh, I just learned all about that, you know, and this is what I did. And so then I get that whole other take from somebody else. And, you know, I don't know. I just love talking about all this stuff and learning about it. So, so why don't you, why don't you unpack a little bit more, um, wellness matters, which, you know, I would fairly or unfairly characterize as kind of your mission to share this knowledge and insight yeah. with the world. And it's, it's a business, but it's also kind of like a mission the way it's just yeah. the impression I've always got from you, right? And what you're kind yeah. of affirming to me right now, where yeah. you're, you're putting content out there, and then you offer paid services like consulting and coaching and, right. and, and other group programs and things like that. Why don't you talk about how this is structured? to uh, deliver on this, on this purpose? So, like I said, I was knee deep in this course and somewhere about three quarters of the way through, it kept like the main speaker. So the course that I took um, for my health coaching is um, the IIN Institute is the, the leading institute for health coaching that there is. Like they've gone to Congress and they've tried to, you know, change different laws and do all the things right they've been around since the 70s and i 
just like I said, I opened Pandora's box and then I couldn't shut it after that. And so somewhere like three quarters of the way through, it was like, all right, you're a health coach. Now you go out there and you start your website and you get going, you know, whatever. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, what are they even talking about? I can't just start a website. What does that even mean? You know, what would I even do with that? And, um, and we, you, you know, you and I had talked about this before we started recording that a lot of times, because I feel like I am kind of in tuned with my body, when I get an idea that is like a hell yeah, I just run with it. I don't necessarily think, oh, but what if, you know, what if it fails or what if nobody listens or what if this? And um, I love myself for, you know, having that. And then, but I'm human too, just like, you know, and I do start thinking, oh my gosh, what if nobody goes on there? But the the hell yes side of me just took over. So I asked my girlfriend whose husband does um, websites on the side, I said, you know, do you think Robert would help me with this? Because I have no blank and clue how to make a website. And she was like, for sure. So we got a template. He showed me what a host is and this and that. And so I got like a host mm -hmm. <laughs> for my website. And um, I'm like, all right, I'm up there, but what am I offering? Right. So once I graduated from IIN, I at least knew that I could become someone's health coach if they wanted to be. But internally, I kept thinking this isn't big enough. I don't want to necessarily work with just one person. I want to work with lots of people, thousands of people that could hear all at one time, right? So I started my blog and I loved it because I'm, you know, throughout my class, I've learned so many things from, you know, what your purpose looks like to macronutrients, you know? So it's like such a scale. And I knew I could talk about those things, but I also realized I like to actually verbally talk. So that's when I decided to do my podcast. And that turned into once I like, it's called the state of flow. Once you're in your, your vibe and right. You're like in your mm -hmm. domain, you're in your passion. Things started like opening up inside of me where I was like, I have got to share this. So like, for months I was working on a, like, a, I call it a package, but really it's just a workbook that you can download. And it's all about um, choosing yourself. Because again, I feel like we live in a society sometimes where if you take care of yourself and you have, you know, self-care practices built into your day, people tend to think you're selfish. And then we get farther and farther away from that inner knowing, like I was explaining earlier. And then you start to spiral, you're depressed, you're anxious, you're this, you're that, because you're so far away from your inner self. So I made this whole workbook on how to um, learn to love yourself again. So I put that up on my website. I did a small little um, introductory um, recording on um, rolling like it's going to sound crazy. So it's called fascia. Have you ever heard of that? Oh yeah. Fascia. Okay. It's, it's uh, I know exactly what fascia is. Okay. It, it surrounds your muscles. It's like yeah, a it type of tissue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And things get trapped in there as crazy as that sounds. Like you have stale and stagnant energy and emotions that are trapped in there. They could be there for years. And so I just fell in love with this practice of rolling. And then they, you also, I found something where you can bounce too. So you use like a rebounder. And so you roll out the emotions and then you kind of, the bouncing helps your lymphatic system open up and let, release things. Right. Um, again, it probably sounds a little crazy or hocus pocus, but it has opened my whole life to a whole new realm. So, well, again, this, the file, this in the category of things that I probably would have thought hippy dippy a couple of years right? ago. I mean, massage therapy is one thing that, oh. um, you know, that it works through fascia, right. Yes, and you physically feel a, a lot better You do right? after a massage, but you also feel better mentally and emotionally. Like yes. you, like you're happy, you're lighter, you're, you feel well, less you're stressed. Releasing, you're releasing things, you're releasing toxins, you're releasing um, old 
patterns and old stories that, you know, just they, they shouldn't be stored up in you anymore. You went through something and it's gone. So back to my um, choose you package, like I, I, my first module is like actually getting rid of and saying goodbye to those past traumas because you know, they're old thought patterns that just should not be running your life anymore. Like whatever happened to you when you were a kid, it was, you know, you got to accept it and own it and then kind of release it, you know, and we get so stuck in those same that like kind of shapes you right. And so you keep going down those same paths and getting the same anxious energy going. And there's just ways to release it now. And so yeah. I did a quick video on that. And now I'm currently working on something where I'm really into intuition right now. So I've kind of gone like, I was going to ask you, I'm glad you're talking about this. Cause you yeah. said like, I, I research and then I get really into things I want to share with everybody. And I was going to mm -hmm. say, what is it right now? Cause you got to oh, share. Yeah. So I get so like, I, I, I see something actually my, I was just on the phone with my sister-in-law last night. And she's huge into, have you ever heard of human design? I don't think so. Okay. So it's kind of like, I don't really know a lot about it. So I don't want to like speak wrong about it, but it's like, um, it was, I think it was founded in like the eighties where it is. Okay. So it's like astrology mixed with some Chinese ideas and like, there's four different components of it. Like, you know how, like with astrology, you know, you're like your sun sign, like I'm a Virgo. And mm -hmm. so it kind of um, like calculates your date of birth, your, you know, the time that you're born, where you were born in the country and all that. And it calculates it all. And it like explains your personality in very in depth. I'm, I'm doing a terrible job explaining it, but I, per I told my sister, I'm like, Trisha, you can't talk to me about this right now because I'm literally knee deep in something else. And I'm going to want to do that one too at the same time. You know, that's how I that's get, funny. Like I just, I see something or I hear something and then I'm like a hundred percent down that rabbit hole. I, um, I know I'm a Libra outside of that. And I'm, re I've read horoscopes here and there before, mm -hmm. you know, especially when they used to be in like the back of a newspaper or something when we used oh, to read yeah, newspapers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, beyond that, I've never really, that's never really clicked for me. Nope. It's not for me either, CJ. It did not. And what most people don't um, actually know is that your sun sign, so you're a Libra, is only a fraction of, you know, what your astrology signs really are. So there's three main ones. So there's the sun, the moon, and um, the rising signs. So I'm a Virgo, but then my moon is in Taurus and then my rising sign is cancer. And so those three components really make up like say 90% of who I am. So when you do a natal chart, like you can print it off online for free. Um, then you're like, cause a lot of times when you're only looking at Libra, you're like, no, that doesn't resonate with me. I'm not like that. I'm more like this. Well, it's because you are taking after your moon sign instead of your sun sign. You know what I'm saying? Well, I got to be honest. Most of the time when I've read this stuff about Libra, I feel like it does resonate. But I've always – that's the one thing I've been a little bit suspicious of because how could – okay, all the people born between September what and October what, right? Right. How that we can't all be the same, no, you're right? Not. How is this going to apply to all of us? You're not. So I was like, maybe they're just really good at writing things that, you know, that apply to large groups of people. I don't know. Right. Maybe if I read every one, I would think that, oh yeah, this is me. But then again, you know, I've done Myers Briggs assessments, I've done DISC assessments, yeah. and those are more those are traditionally scientific. And as a Western civilization, we much more grad like we we much more gravitate to like logic, left brain, scientific stuff. Where on right. the Eastern hemisphere, they're a lot more in touch with right brain intuition. Mm -hmm. um, right. I think, uh, I, th I actually, I, when I was uh, really starting to get into the marketing and advertising industry, mm -hmm. um, I followed, um, and I still do to some extent now, a really incredible advertising copywriter named Roy H. Williams. He's down in Austin, Texas, and he has a school called Wizard Academy. Um, and it, it sounds really hippy dippy. It's right. really designed to teach 
um, persuasion to yeah. marketers and business owners. Okay. And he uses a lot of left brain stuff and a lot of right brain stuff. Yeah. And he introduces a lot of similar principles to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So um, like, for example, one of the time we were talking about string theory, okay. like string theory, I'm trying to grow my business. Why are you talking about vibrations and right. all these different dimensions? It was really interesting. Because I won't. Because everything is a vibration. Everything, is, everything a vibration. is a vibration. I learned that. So that's when you say you can operate at a higher vibration. I'm like, oh, OK, that makes sense. And that's also why, like the idea of of stress or anxiety being bottled up in your fascia it's like well stress isn't matter stress right. is a feeling well no everything vibration. derives from matter everything is a vibration yeah. so right. that really really connects with me right. um but be, like what i was trying to say was like those myers-briggs those discs really do speak to me and so it would not be surprised if there's a little bit more of like an intuitive side that also relates you know oh, what I mean? Because 100%. you don't have more of a left brain than a right brain. You have both right. and they're both right. equal, right? And the thing is, is like when you were a kid, like I was saying, you were open to anything. You wanted to hear about magic and this and that, you know, all the fun things. And then slowly life beats you down and like people are telling you what you're supposed to be thinking and what you're supposed to be feeling. And that right brain just starts to shut down completely right and you're constantly living in that left side of the brain so the more like i was starting to uncover my right side more and my spiritual side and my just my intuitive side mm -hmm. the more i realized oh my gosh i feel amazing i feel so good and that has been interesting because a lot of people that i that so I just, I go out into the world and then I, I look around and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you're so closed off. You know what I mean? Like you're living in straight up anxiety or you're living in, you know, you're a victim or you're this or that. And it's like, oh, I just, if I could like help people in any way, it would be just to open and expand your mind fully. Well, here's the, and here's the challenging part. Well, at least seemingly challenging to me, because I don't know, I'm not you. Right. How does how does somebody in that position become aware, right? Like right. the only way, like a fish spends its whole life in water, but doesn't know that water exists. Right. The only way for to show fish what water is is to pull a fish out of water. Right. Right. So, how is somebody who is um, closed off or a victim or like overly stressed? How do they see themselves that? that they are in that position that they need it. Because a lot of times I think being in that position confines you to a viewpoint of identifying where other people have gone wrong, right? right. Well, I don't know. Traditionally, I'm traditionally what's been, you know, what happens is people are so closed off. They do not start going down this path. Um, you know, more of the right brain, like we were talking more of like the Eastern medicine type stuff, people don't even start to open that door until they're in crisis mode, where um, maybe somebody got a really bad diagnosis, or um, somebody is literally going to go to the ER, because they have had a psychotic break, you know. Um, and that's usually what sadly for a lot of people is the wake up call. Um, and my thing is before, like, I'm all about prevention. So like a lot of people that, you know, I talked to or whatever, they're like, why are you so passionate about this? Why do you, you know, I want to eat whatever I want to eat and I want to live my life the way I want to live. And I'm like, absolutely you should, but it should be, you should be loving yourself at the same time right so mm -hmm. the next time you think about you know having all the fried food that you possibly can in one sitting think about how much more your organs are going to be taxed to digest that food and i'm not saying that i don't eat it i i, I do it's definitely balanced. no you're right i like if i if i have like fried food and a beer at the end of the week. I feel great. I feel deserving. I'm excited. Yep. If I were to eat that throughout the course of the weekend, yep. um, I would feel, sluggish. I would probably physically feel sluggish. Emotionally, I would feel, I don't know the right way to characterize this, not proud of myself. 
Right. You know what I mean? Why did I do that? So it's you know, a, I'm like, uh, it's that cycle of, and, and so many people get caught in that cycle of, okay, um, I'm going to have this, you know, giant piece of cake, whatever. I'm going to eat the whole cake, whatever. And in the moment it feels good. They're on a high, you know, whatever. Cause there's literally endorphins being released during that. Um, and then it's after the fact where it is literally, you are your own punching bag for Lord only knows how long certain people can, you know, literally beat the crap out of themselves for that. Okay. And then you finally get off of that cycle. Next thing you know, here's a, you know, the milkshake and the pizza and the this and that and you're back on that whole cycle once again. Um, yeah. Those patterns, you know why you shouldn't be doing, but you still get caught up in it. And so those and are the things. What you just described right there. That's yeah. when I do something and I know, like even in the moment, I'm like, yeah, I know I shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I do it anyway. So I even, even if I can justify it. Right. Yeah. Like, cause I use left brain to be like, yep. his right brain is like, you know, hey, it's like sending you these feelings, like mm, maybe stay away. And left yeah. brain's like, well, you just, you know, worked a full week or you did whatever, right? It can rationalize anything that it wants to, right? Right. Um, and then, and then you do it. And then it's like, you feel like, this is what I'm, this, it, it, this sounds like a little bit hyperbolic, but I've, I've now figured out how I wanted to describe it. It feels like betrayal feels like yeah. I'm betraying myself, right? Because deep down, intuitively, I know, you know, what I need, what makes me happy, what my body wants. But then when I act outside of that, and then kind of live with the consequences, I know we're so, talking about like eating fried food, but you can yeah. extrapolate that to anything. Probably. Anything. Um, so one of the things I do a lot on my website is I offer a lot of free guides, like I'll type up something and then I'll say, Okay, if you subscribe, then you get this free guide in your email. So I just put one up um, on Sunday and it's how to let go of fear. But the one before that was self-sabotage, how to stop self-sabotaging yourself. And um, in there, which has a lot to do with what I'm working on right now is, so your ego is there, it's, it's made, it's part of you that helps, to, there's parts of it that are good. Like it's trying to protect you from something really bad. but the fear then takes over completely the ego takes over completely and your intuitive side shrinks more and more and more and more and when you are living in that fear the self sabotage all the time you're missing out in relationships in work in opportunities to grow you know creatively it doesn't matter what it is but it literally takes over your whole life it's like um you know, cookie monster or something. He constantly wants to have the cookies, right? Mm -hmm. That's what, what, that's what your ego does. You give me a little inch, I'm going to take a mile. So it's very easy to have your entire being be consumed with ego, which then turns into protection and fear all the time. So you're living in a state of fear all the time. Um, and you don't even necessarily know it's your new normal, you know? Um, so why would somebody think I should probably get a hold of my ego? That's not something that people talk about. You know, it's not something that you see on the TV screen. <laughs> what yeah. you see is, you know, that's totally normal. But anyways, if you yeah. subscribe to my website now, you would get like the free guide on how to let go of fear. Stop letting it run your life. You know, live the life that you were supposed to be living, why you're here to begin with. That's finding your passion, what lights you up inside. And once you figure out what lights you up inside, do you know what happens? Everybody that's surrounding you sees that light and then they're like, oh my gosh, how do I get some of that, right? So like currently right now, Todd is like trying to, you know, as like a little side thing, learn how to be um, a personal trainer. And never in a million years did I think that he would want to do something like that. But he like, he sees me trying to break out of old mold, molds and old stories and patterns and that kind of thing. And now he wants a piece of that. You know what I mean? Um, that is amazing. You just reminded me of this old quote from this guy who lived in the late 18th century to early 19th century, Johann Wolfgang von Gerte, 
It's spelled G-O-E-T-H-E. I forget how to pronounce it. Somebody introduced me to this quote about 10 years ago. It says, until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back always in effectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves to. I love that quote. Amazing. It's amazing. Love that quote. It actually reminds me, I just started reading. Did you ever read the book? It's called The Secret. No, I've heard of it. I um, I, I, I know a lot of people who like that. I would love to <laughs> check that out. So it's literally, it said something in there like, why do you think it is that 1% of the population earns 96% of all the money on the planet, right? It's because those 1% of people have literally figured out how to be in control of their mind, how to always be whatever. So like attracts like, so whatever you are putting out there, I'm a victim, life owes me something. I, you know, all the things that's, what's going to keep showing up because like attracts like, if you are somebody who is like, positive and knows what they want and they go for it. And, um, you put again, you're even your thoughts are vibration. It's, it's energy. So when that's, when you're thinking it all the time, constantly, it's going out into the universe and, and then it's going to come back twofold kind of thing. That's what this whole book is about anyways. Um, and it has people from, you know, Socrates to Van Gogh to all the greats in the world condensed into this one book. It's really cool. They call it the secret because it's like, once you know this information, you know, nothing can stop you kind of thing. I love it. That sounds yeah. really interesting. Yeah. It's a, it's a quick read too, because it's all like snippets of all these different people that have figured out the secret. What in the sad part is, is that we are all walking around not knowing the secret. So, um, I don't know. It's a really interesting read. That's a good that. tip. Um, so I will say that I have, I subscribed to your, uh, your emails a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Your content is awesome. Oh, I would encourage no. anybody to do the same. I'm going to make sure that when I publish this, I'll include a link. Um, to your website where they can subscribe, get that free ebook, um, learn more, like check out your blog, check out your podcast, yeah. uh, so on and so forth. Um, I think this was super, super interesting. I was um, obviously, you know, as soon as like we had that conversation a handful of weeks ago, I was like, Heather, you need to come on and I, I yeah. want to do this. And um, this was this was super awesome. Uh, before we part ways, um, any parting uh, words of wisdom or directions for anybody who might be listening or watching and maybe wants to learn more, wants to get in touch with you? Uh, where should somebody uh, should somebody go to find you? Well, to come, you know, if you want to find me, just go to my website, which is wellnessmattersblog.com. But any words of wisdom, I would say that, you know, a, a good mantra that you can have all the time is keep it simple. Um, you know yourself best, even though it seems so crazy and so hard to get there, it really is not rocket science. Just get quiet, be quiet. Go, to, go into nature, sit on a log, look at the bugs on the ground. I don't care what you do, but just get quiet, get, the phone out of your hand, get the TV off the screen and the computer and the, the to-do the to list has got to go. Um, and just get quiet and be present with yourself. I'm telling you, it's it'll change your life. It's that simple. So you recommend everybody should like meditate in one way or another? Oh, I, I mean, it, old Heather five years ago, I wouldn't have listened to that. So I, I would love for everybody to meditate. I would think that that would be probably the most beneficial thing you could do. Like I said, that's like a tradition that's um, thousands of years old. Yeah, there's no way that th these traditions would be la would have lasted as long as they oh, no. are if they, no. they weren't effective. No, same with yoga. Um, I always thought yoga was, um, you know, a way to just move your body, whatever, and it's slow and 
I actually found it very boring. Um, and then I really learned what the purpose of that is more like a spiritual way for you to move your body in a way that you're closer to source, you know, or God or whatever. That was the whole purpose of yoga. Um, it wasn't necessarily a workout. It was a time to quiet your mind. It's movement medicine. It's medicating your body through movement. Um, and once I changed that whole mindset as well, I was like, I got to get me some yoga, <laughs> you know? Um, awesome. But yeah, it's these um, practices are foolproof. They've been around for thousands of years for a reason. And um, if you can just open your mind and expand just, just 5%, I'm telling you, you'll soon be 10%. 50%. It's just the doors just start opening nonstop, nonstop. This is really inspiring. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean that. Um, I feel very inspired. I'm going to be um, uh, checking out more of your content for sure. Yay. And um, yeah, I feel, I feel, I mean, I didn't feel bad going into this. I'm having a perfectly normal, fine day. Yeah. And I was excited for this conversation. But coming on the other side, like I literally... Actually, it's funny because I mentioned Barbara. It's, it's similar to how I felt after meeting Barbara. Like you didn't coach me live, but um, I feel lighter. I feel like, oh, this all makes sense. I can do this. Yes, that's your intuitive yes coming right out right now. Um, I talked to my mom a lot about the intuitive yes, and I learned it from a woman in California once again. She was like, so if you go to the grocery store and you have your bag open and you got to get 10 oranges and you start picking all your oranges, the last couple, for some reason, give you like a hard time. Like, which ones do I get? And now all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, is this one good or that one good? Your intuitive yes, pick the first like seven without even thinking about it. You got to harness that intuitive yes once again. You know what I mean? Tap into that more. It's then with the last three where you're like, is this a good one? Is this a good one? Is this a good one? There's the ego, you know, that one's got the, a dark spot on it. That one feels whatever, um, doesn't look right. And, but you want to get more in that intuitive side, which is what you just said. Like you feel lighter. Something in this conversation made you like kind of get like, the jitters or, you know, like a butterfly effect or something like. And a calming effect too. A, calming a very, effect. a very calming, optimistic, yeah. affirming feeling. Yes. yes. I'm telling you, I was you or not even you, cause you are saying that you're very open-minded to this kind of thing. I did not, I believed in, okay, I'm going to work out every single day. I'm going to, you know, stress my body to the max because that's what everybody's doing. I'm going to hit that Peloton bike every single day. Um, and one day I was like, for what am I doing this? I'm killing myself. It does not need to be this intense. It, it, it just, you got to just flow and trust that everything is going to, you know, work out. Okay. And once you start to, you know, do some of that deep breathing, you know, and figuring things out, it just, you feel so much better. You feel lighter, you know? I'm going to give it a try. You should. <laughs> so Heather Carocchio, wellnessmattersblog.com. She's got a blog. She's got a podcast. She does consulting group packages. Um, really, really cool stuff. Um, I definitely hope that we can do this again because this was really fun. But even if we don't, there's plenty of ways to connect with Heather and learn more. Heather, thank you so much for taking the time and coming on uh, and sharing your wisdom with everybody. Anytime. I appreciate it.